All right, everybody. Here we go. Together again at last. You know how I like that. We need to go over a few things, but before I do that, I should probably tell you it's still Tuesday, April 7th, 2020. How about this? Going, going, gone. Yeah. Um, at one point today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 937 points. Well, we finished in the negative. In the freaking negative. Yeah. Um, we need to talk about what's happening here, literally behind the scenes, what's driving this. And I'm going to ask you all a big, fat, ugly question. And I really want to hear your response on this a little later on. All right. So again, stocks lost a pretty much 1,000 point gain right at the open. I mean, stock futures were off to the races, just like, you know, everything is perfect. You know, we don't have a world economy in lockdown. We're not slaves in our own houses right now. We're not having our rights taken away. We're not being told what to do, what to think. Uh, we, we can't even touch each other anymore. No, no, no. Can't even touch each other. Yeah. Anyway, you know, this is all just a big, ugly, fat charade as they usher in the new American government uh, and a Federal Reserve, the new, the new World Central Bank taking it all over right before our eyeballs. Pretty, pretty incredible. All right. Let's talk about some other assets. Cryptocurrencies caught a bid, not much. Silver finished slightly higher. Gold slightly lower. The 10-year yield remains strongly below 1%, although it is still about 0.72. Um, so look, crude oil, in my opinion, was... A, I mean, look, this whole thing is sick, but crude oil cratering nearly 7% had a lot to do with why the stock market cannot hold any gains today. Um, and the president is out again promising that there's going to be some kind of deal between Russia and OPEC, so crude's going back up. I don't want to pay more for energy, do you? So why is the president pushing this so hard? Why does he want a deal? between Russia and OPEC so freaking badly? Well, because he knows, like I do, and so do you, that crude oil is the lifeblood of the military-industrial complex. The, the New World Order needs crude oil higher. So, you know, being that he's the chosen one, <laughs> uh, yeah, he needs crude higher. So he's going to keep jawboning it, promising it's going to go up, talking about a deal. I don't want a deal. I want to see crude stay where it is. I want to see crude fall lower. I don't give a damn about the energy sector that's getting bailed out. I don't give a damn about the financial sector, which is getting bailed out more than anybody else. Do you? No, but the president does. So uh, something's wrong there, obviously. No. The whole system, the whole thing from the top down is, is rotten. It stinks. It's horrible. And I just despise the new America, this national socialist government that is now taken over here on an epic scale. Let's talk more about that real quick. I want you to ponder this and I want to hear from you. Please answer this question. And, and when you do, when you answer this particular question, I'm going to ask you, I want you to answer me. And I promise I will read the comments. Answer me in a way that a young child would understand. Okay. Because you know, it wasn't brains that got me here. Anyway, you all know where that's from, right? Anyway, it's from the movie Margin Call. But it's the truth. Explain this to me in very rudimentary, basic terms. Because I don't want to think too hard when I read the comments. So here we go. Over the past three and a half weeks, Wall Street has gotten, that we know of, $1.8 trillion dollars. What has this done? This 1.8 trillion, again, that we know of, it's probably more, has managed to push stocks well off of the lows. That's what it was meant to do, period. Now, we just found out that Congress is going to be voting on 
expanding its rescue package for the American people. Uh, you know, bailing out or bailing out small businesses and, you know, giving checks to people. Okay. Um, it's a $360 billion program. They're talking about expanding it. I think another 200 or 250 billion. Okay. Let me ask you this. And here's where I need you to answer very, you know, very childlike so I can understand this. Why is it that Congress didn't have to vote on giving Wall Street at least $1.8 trillion in the last three and a half weeks, but Congress must vote on a rescue package for the American people? Do you see where I'm going with this? Something isn't adding up. Again, I don't understand this too much. Maybe you can explain it to me in a very rudimentary way, but Congress must vote on, uh, you know, whatever, 360, like a $500 billion rescue package for the American people. But Wall Street can just do this and get at least $1.8 trillion in three weeks with much, much more coming. I mean, we haven't even scratched the surface. Steve Mnuchin himself said it's unlimited. So Wall Street gets unlimited funds. Does it need a vote? But a rescue package for the American people, much less capital, needs a vote. They need to vote on that. Hmm. So like I said, explain this to me in very basic terms because I just don't understand it. All right, look, um, that's, that's where we're at. It, it, and I want to go over this with you as well. We just found this out. And I find this very sad, very, very sad. In February, this past February, American citizens borrowed 90% more than they did in January the following month. And right now, we just had, what, 10 million, over 10 million American citizens just lose their jobs? And they're getting a $1,200 check, a big, fat, ugly $1,200 check? I guess where we know that we know where that check is going to go pay back, pay back the creditors. Uh, it's really not helping us, is it now? I don't think so. It's, it's, it's insane. It really is. And, and, and I'm going to say it one more time. It really bothers me that Wall Street gets $1.8 trillion that we know of in the last three and a half weeks. No vote needed, but they have to vote on a rescue package for everybody else and small businesses. Um, What do you make of that? Uh, does it allow you to see a little more clearly that no member of Congress is on your side? That every single member of Congress, including the president, don't get too hyped up, um, uh, all work for Wall Street? I think you get that. I really do. At least I would like to believe you do, because I know there are some deluded people who still believe in the two-party system. They, they think that, I don't know, Nancy Pelosi's got their best interest for the Democrats and President Trump, MAGA, let's MAGA, but we got to vote. We got to vote to rescue the American people. Well, Wall Street gets anything it wants in any amount. It's unlimited ex Mnuchin. That's what he said. Seriously, I'm not making this stuff up. Look it up for yourself. Uh, there's definitely something wrong here, and this new America, yeah, it's it's national socialism, but it seems to be benefiting the one percenters, the vampires, those that I've been warning you about, those that want more, even though they have 98% of the world's wealth already. They want it all, and you, you are nothing. That's why... Congress has to vote for you, but Wall Street gets anything it wants in any amount. And you got to laugh. I got to laugh myself too. I'm sitting here and I'm watching Bloomberg. I'm watching Fox Business. I'm watching CNBC. And they're all talking about the rebound off the bottom. Stocks are getting bought up. Yeah, you know, $1.8 trillion, at least that we know of. I'm going to keep saying that because you know it's more than that. Uh, in the past three and a half weeks... That'll do a lot to push up stocks when you have a central bank 
funneling all this cash to investment banks, buying it all, buying it all. So when you hear one of those talking heads on one of these business shows, they had some blonde lady uh, talking just prior to the close on CNBC. She was talking to the lovely Sarah, and she's like sitting there with her straight face, looking all kind of smug and snooty, talking about the rebound off the bottom. But will she mention that it's the $1.8 trillion that Wall Street just got to prop it all back up? Oh, yeah. Oh, and the president, again, I, w I have to say this. He is still promising that there's going to be a deal with OPEC and Russia, so energy will go higher, so you have to pay more. Explain to me again in very rudimentary terms, like like I'm a child. Pretend like Greg's a child. Watch, I'll show you. Greg is a child. Explain to Greg why, for you Trump supporters out here, why does the president want you to pay more for energy? Do you want to pay more? Is it going to help you to pay more for energy? And everything else as, at the same time, because let's see, all the stuff you buy from the stores is shipped via trucks or train or airplane, and they all use energy, so you have to pay more for everything. Sounds like a great idea. Make America great again. Yeah? Yeah? Is that how we do it? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, if you're a mental midget, maybe that's how you do it. Um, but no, that's not how we do it. But the president must convince you that that's... What needs to be done. Just like negative rates are supposed to be so great for the American people. Remember that during his rallies? Negative rates! Yay! The crowds of people. The imbeciles on an epic scale. They don't know what to do. They have no idea. They follow just like Hitler. Seek Heil! Seek Heil! They must follow their leader. They must follow the leader. Oh, 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 oh. I'll leave you off with that. Love you a lot. Please share the video. I'm so out of here.